What's up guys, welcome to Snakes and Trails Season 3. My name is Tyler Carlson and um, today I'm going to be doing a little bit of driving to where I'm going to look for some snakes tonight in a mountain range that is notoriously difficult to find snakes in. Uh, should be a cool time, whether we get to see any snakes or not, I'm going to document my time there. Uh, I'm going to do some road cruising and I'm going to do some hiking in the morning. Um, and we'll see what happens, it should be really fun though. Let's go ahead and cue that intro. Alright guys, so this mountain range we're going to is one of the most difficult places to look for um, one of the rarest snakes in the United States called um, the New Mexico Ridge Nose Rattlesnake, uh, Crotalus um, Willardi Obscurus, um, which is a subspecies of the snake that is the logo for snakes and trails, um, but this particular subspecies is much harder to find. There's actually a debate right now in the herping community um, about whether or not subspecies should actually even exist. Um, biologists and taxonomists are currently at work um, doing pretty much everything they can to get rid of subspecies, which is really interesting because by that logic, I've already seen one of these snakes. I've seen Crotalus willardi, uh, but I've never seen Crotalus willardi obscurus. Um, and if they ever get rid of those subspecies, it'd be a shame because the name Obscurus is just so cool. So anyway, I'm excited to get down here and see what I can find. Uh, they also have Arizona Mountain King snakes, um, green rat snakes. Uh, I could probably find clobber eye or the banded rock rattlesnake um, and a bunch of other things. We'll see what ends up happening though. Um, I'm gonna spend the evening and the morning there. And if it's terrible, I'll relocate and keep going. But I'm gonna go ahead and document this trip day by day in separate episodes instead of doing a whole episode for one trip so that you guys can get a better idea of how brutal it can be between finding snakes. I feel like so often I just show you snake after snake after snake that it makes it look so easy. So it's definitely not that easy and uh, we're gonna go ahead and see what we can find. Okay, I'm ready when you are. I'm ready. Um, can I get um, uh, number three, large with no onions and uh, Diet Coke? Thank you. Hello. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, have a good day. Life on the road looking for snakes isn't always glamorous, and the type of food you get isn't always the healthiest food either, but that's part of what makes it fun, so I'll give you a quick two minute review on this double quarter pounder with cheese. I'm thinking it'll be pretty good, like always. I mean, they're pretty great anyway. So, we'll go ahead and chow down, we're gonna keep driving, and we'll get there eventually. All right, guys, so I just got to the place where I'm gonna be doing some herping. Um, it's beautiful. This is one of the coolest mountain ranges that I've been to. It's also one of the hardest to look for snakes in, but you can find uh, ridge nose rattlesnakes, um, the New Mexico subspecies of which, uh, green rat snakes, um, I could probably find black tail rattlesnakes, and a couple of other cool things, um, but other than that, I'm really excited to see what we can find. Um, and it's pretty warm right now. I'm doing a little bit of scouting out to see where I might want to hike early in the morning. Uh, and I'm going to road cruise this road uh, tonight until it gets too cold to cruise anymore. But I'm really hoping we'll see some stuff. It's a pretty nice warm day. So as it starts to cool off, I think some things are going to take advantage of the heat on the roads and uh, maybe be moving a little bit. Anyway, let's see what happens. By the way, my burger easily 10 out of 10. McDonald's, good job. You're always a classic go-to herping food. Um, so for the rest of this trip, I'm going to do herping food reviews every day, reviewing whatever crappy drive-through place I go to, and I'll let you know what the best, 
crappy road trip herping food is. Uh, anyway, let's get to it and see if we can't find a snake. This looks like a good enough place to make camp. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put up the tent, uh, have some dinner, and then I'll start cruising and hopefully it'll be cooled off a little bit by then. And yeah, we'll go from there. All right guys, so finished setting up camp. Feel pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, have some dinner here and then I'll get cruising. Um, the sky, or not the sky, the sun seems to be getting a little bit lower in the sky, which is good. Shadows are starting to get a little bit longer, which means the sun isn't causing as much direct heat on whatever surface it's shining on. Um, well, usually, as the sun sets in that part of the day, the snakes will start to come out on these roads. So what I'm gonna do is uh, strap on my GoPro and start driving back and forth and back and forth on this road until I get lucky and find something. So I'll uh, show you that whenever it happens. All right guys, so I'm uh, on my third pass now. Um, it's been about an hour and a half. I haven't seen anything, but it's super gorgeous. I'll show you this sunset. Oh baby. All right, I'm gonna keep on cruising and uh, we'll see what we find. All right guys, I just got back to camp and I didn't end up seeing any snakes. Um, a little bit of a bummer to not see any on the first night, but I was kind of expecting it with this being as difficult of a range as it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get to bed. I'll wake up in the morning and uh, hike a little bit to see what I can find. All right guys, so I'm uh, tucked into my tent for the night. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get some sleep and wake up in the morning. Um, I might do a little bit of chemistry homework before I go to bed um, because it's that season of that particular illness that gets people demonetized on YouTube. So um, I'm going to do some of that homework and I'll turn it in online when I can get Wi-Fi access. But anyway, I'm excited to be out here and we'll see you guys in the morning. Alligator lizard. So alligator lizards are cool. They're in the same family as legless lizards, like glass lizards. You can see how small his legs are um, over time. Um, snake or species of lizards similar to him have evolved to just not have legs, like snakes. Kind of cool. All right, guys. So here's this Arizona alligator lizard. Um, they're really cool little uh, lizards. They're um, very vibrant and banded, as you can see. I've seen them before in New Mexico. They're, they're not super common. Um, I mean, sorry, they're not super uncommon. They're uh, pretty um, prolific, but it's not a snake, and um, I would like to see a snake. I've been skunked yesterday and today, so um, 
We'll see what happens. Alright guys, so we didn't end up flipping any snakes, only that alligator lizard, which was still really cool. But I think it's time to reassess uh, the situation here a little bit. Um, I think it's too, um, or it's not warm enough yet in this area for things to be that far away from where they're hibernating. I think the overnight lows are still a little bit low. Um, so what I'm going to do is head out to an area of lower desert where I can look for rosy boas, um, speckled rattlesnakes, liar snakes, all sorts of cool stuff. So I'm going to actually call this the end of this episode of Snakes and Trails. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to come back next week to see what happens in that desert. See you next time.